What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to be talking about the difference between waterfall and agile software development. All right, so if you guys are brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, or startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe because that's all we talk about on this channel and it helps me really just stay motivated to make this content for you guys. This was gonna be pretty short, hopefully informal, so that you guys can kind of just understand the difference between waterfall and agile because these are words that you're gonna hear a lot either while you're in coding bootcamp or once you graduate and start working as a software developer. With that, they're really just two different approaches to software development. So neither is necessarily right or wrong. It's just that they fit different situations or projects better than others. Waterfall is very linear. Um, it's very, it's the traditional, I would consider it kind of the old school way of doing software development because there's no room for real flexibility. You're gathering all the requirements up front from the business and you're assuming that they know exactly what they want in the beginning. And a lot of times that doesn't happen to be the case because the business people aren't actually technical minded. So they're very business minded. They have a very good understanding of how the business works, their market, their competitors and things like that. But they, aren't always able to translate their business ideas into technical ideas very well. And so that's where us as developers have to do a really good job of being able to understand their pain points and being able to articulate what we can do for them or the best way to help them solve that pain point. One of the good things that some people like about waterfall development is that the business isn't involved a lot. So in the beginning, you have this one, you know, big kickoff meeting where you get all these requirements from the business of everything they want you to do. And then after that, you are pretty much set free to go and develop you or the team or whoever can go develop that solution. And you have very little contact with the business after that. So like I said, it doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing, but if the business isn't 100% sure of what they want in the beginning up front, then there's very little room for flexibility or changes to come up down the road. And I think that's where Waterfall really started to hit the biggest rejections or uh, criticisms in the software development industry. All right, so moving on to the more modern approach to software development, which is Agile. This is what you guys are gonna hear probably everywhere. Um, and if you're at a company that does Agile development, then it's likely a good thing because you don't really want to be somewhere that's still doing waterfall in my opinion at this day and time in agile development instead of being so linear and not really flexible and not really able to change things in agile we're still going to get a lot of business requirements up front but instead of trying to tell the business how long it's going to take us to finish the entire project we're going to then take all those business requirements and we're going to break them up into what we call sprints in agile and sprints can be any interval that you want it could be one week two weeks three weeks four weeks two months However long you feel that your team needs to complete a sprint and whatever velocity you guys are working on and no matter how, depending on how big the project is, you guys can decide what a good velocity for a sprint is. But you set the timeline of how quickly or slowly the sprints move and then you and the team will factor in how much effort it takes from each person to complete their part of that sprint. So you're gonna take those business requirements and you're gonna turn them into user stories of some sort. And then you and the developers are gonna sit down and have meetings and you're basically gonna decide what user stories can fit into each sprint or how many sprints do we need to finish certain user stories. And then from that, you're gonna do something called story pointing, which is then taking everybody or every developer on the team's effort or energy into consideration for how long they think it's gonna take them individually to complete their part of a user story or of a certain task within a sprint. And so by doing that, you're able to decide, okay, this is how long or how much energy and effort we all need to, com to complete these user stories or these parts of the business requirements and it's gonna take us two sprints or three sprints, whatever it is. But then at the end of that two or three sprints, you can then sit down with the business again and say, here you go, here's what we delivered. This is what we initially talked about. Here's what we delivered. Does this you know, satisfy you? Do you like how this works, how this looks? And at that time, the business is free to make changes or request you know, certain things or talk to you about if certain features are possible. Can we add this? Can we do that? 
but it's not going to affect the rest of your project timeline because everything is done on a sprint to sprint basis. So if you knew something was going to take you two or three sprints to complete and you complete that, now you're free to, you know, bring in new requirements or get rid of certain requirements if, you know, that's what they ask for, but you have that room of flexibility because you're taking the requirements and you're breaking them into, you know, user stories and sprints and, you know, it's a lot more iterative so you're having a lot more face-to-face -face meetings with the business and checking in with them to say okay we initially agreed on this here's what we developed what do you think and you're just repeating that cycle all the way until the entire project is completed so again guys the the real difference between waterfall is that in waterfall we're going to get all the project requirements up front and we're going to go off and develop the entire project and we're going to come back and update the business when we have the entire project finished basically in agile we're going to get the requirements up front and then we're going to break them into user stories which then get split into sprints and then we're going to revisit with the business after however many sprints we need to complete our work and we're going to give them updates let them give us feedback make any changes they want and then we go back to development in our sprints and then we come back and we revisit them again once we finish that sprint and we just continue to do that so yeah guys that's gonna wrap it up for this one i really hope that it was helpful i hope you guys got something out of that if it was let me know down below in the comment section i really appreciate it and if you guys are brand new to coding make sure you check out the description box down below where i'm giving away my free intro to coding boot camp course for anybody who's thinking about starting to code or going to a coding boot camp Everything I wish I learned before I went to Coding Bootcamp is in that course. It's completely free. It only costs your email address. So make sure you guys check that out. And also in the description box, there's a free private Facebook group where you guys can go grab all the extra resources that I don't give away in every description box of every video. So there's a lot of people over there who are getting all those free resources and learning on their own and getting better as developers. So make sure you guys check that out. But yeah, this is Darian, guys, with Darian the Dead, and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, peace.